If you've just joined us, you're watching Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris with me, Sharad Kutun. On January 10th, China shared the genetic sequence of COVID-19. And since then, there has been a mad scramble to find a vaccine. But just how far are we from a safe, manufacturable vaccine for COVID-19? Joining us on the line now to help us think through this question is Jean-Michel Pidanel, Director of Southeast Asia at the Drugs for Neglected Diseases Initiative. Jean-Michel, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us on the show tonight. Now, is good it, evening. Thank you for having me. Is it a given, Jean-Michel, that we will have a vaccine for COVID-19 and it's merely a matter of time before we have one? Or is it more about... Um, when we'll have a vaccine rather than if we'll find one? I, I, I think it's generally speaking more when we will have a vaccine, although you know, people that are specialised in the, in the development of vaccines might not like me to say that, but I think it's more when we will have a vaccine than uh, if we will have a vaccine. Okay. But the development of drugs or vaccine in general take a long time, you know. Um, well, I'm more into uh, the, the development of treatment of new drugs and, for example, the development of a new chemical entity takes 10 years. And the development of a vaccine is also uh, takes a long time. So today we are talking of having a vaccine within a year or uh, 18 months, and it's already, uh, you know, it's quite remarkable that we are re we, we are capable of thinking that within 12 months or 18 months we will have a vaccine. Right. Uh, Jean-Michel, Jean could you explain to us the difference between a vaccine and uh, therapies that are also being developed for mm. those already infected? Uh, by COVID, uh, the coronavirus? Well, I think, I, I, I think the best way to explain is that, you know, when we see the spread of this COVID-19, we need different tools to deal with it and to stop the spreading of it. Uh, and one of the tools uh, we have is, of course, to treat people as soon as they are uh, infected so that they don't com contaminate other people. Uh, the other thing we have is we could also use a prophylaxis, which is to use a drug. Uh, uh, maybe some of you have, have had that before for malaria, where you take a small quantity of a drug for a short period of time in order to avoid uh, catching uh, malaria, for example. But we also have a kind of a prophylaxis for other diseases such as HIV, where you, you take a certain amount of, uh, of drug over time to prevent being infected. So that's the prophylaxis. But of course, the best tool we can have in order to prevent uh, the COVID-19 spreading is the vaccines. And that is definitely something essential for all of us in preventing this epidemic to go on, ruining our life as it is today. <laughs> so can I come back to what you said? You said that uh, drug development often takes a long time, 10 years, you mentioned. And now we're talking about a, a, a 12 to 18 month timeline when it comes to this vaccine. Why is it that this, uh, this vaccine has been accelerated so much? Is that safe for it to be, to be uh, developed in such a short amount of time? Hmm. So there is a difference in between uh, putting a new chemical entity on the, on the market for, uh, as a treatment and a vaccine. And yes, uh, actually, uh, 18 months is a short period of time. But if you look at it, it's also a very long period of time. Don't we wish we would have a vaccine now? And the reason uh, we can't have it now is because the process is meant to guarantee the safety of us, of the people that are going to receive that vaccine. And there is a certain number of steps in the development of a vaccine that, you know, you cannot uh, go without uh, these steps. And that's why it's taking such a long time. So first you, you, you try in vitro, then you try on animals, then you try on human, and it, it takes a long time. Mm. And 18 months is indeed a very sh uh, short period of time to develop a new vaccine. And it's remarkable and it's really great that there is such a commitment to find this vaccine so, so quickly. Help us understand what the, the global uh, framework, uh, regulatory framework is like. I mean, people talk, talk about the FDA, uh, there's the, the European equivalent, the EMA, I understand. Uh, these are, are, are these the only two go-to um, regulators in, that the world trusts? No, not at all. Every country has its own uh, FDA, if you want. Huh? Uh, in Malaysia, it's called the NPRA. So uh, every country is sovereign in deciding uh, how they are going to register and uh, uh, develop drugs. 
So it means that if a drug is approved uh, in one country, it also needs to be approved in another country to be used uh, in every of these countries. So um, it, it's also quite a tedious process, but we can see that in the case of the COVID-19, there will be a real willingness to make sure this happens uh, quickly. Obviously, we need this vaccine uh, quickly without compromising the safety of uh, people. Okay, Jean-Michel, what then are the potential problems that could arise after a vaccine is found? I mean, I'm thinking about supply, which could be limited, or possibly cost, which make, would make it uh, inaccessible. Yeah, so, so it's true. That's a major problem. And, you know, when you speak about this topic, you talk about the race to uh, bring a, va a vaccine on the market, and it, it sounds really competitive. And I hope that we are not going to go into that competitive mode. I think we, we, we all need a vaccine. You know, this, this pandemic is eating all of us, half of the humanity is confined at home. So we all need a vaccine. And uh, we cannot afford to have a, a development model where people are going to compete and fight. Mm -hmm. We need to work together and we need to make sure that this uh, vaccine is accessible to all, including uh, the most vulnerable, including in uh, low-income countries. This is really crucial and important. This is something that uh, we at the NDI feel very strongly about, you know, that all these new treatments and all these new vaccines need to be affordable, need to be accessible. And if, it's, if they are driven only by uh, uh, the impetus of making profit, that would be a real disaster. Uh, for us all. Help me understand. I mean, I understand uh, there are several methods in terms of a vaccine and different methodologies or strategies. Is it possible that we might actually have several vaccines out there in the market or in, you know, available uh, at the end of this uh, 12 to 18 month period? Yeah, I hope so, because, you know, I, I think, you know, like, like everywhere, the more the, com the market is competitive, uh, the more product we have, the more the prices will go down. We have seen that, for example, in Malaysia. Uh, Ma Malaysia has, has taken a very strong uh, stand on the access to uh, hepatitis C treatment mm -hmm. and has made sure that uh, the Malaysian market would be a competitive market for HCV treatment. And that has brought the prices of uh, HCV treatment in Malaysia uh, down to an unprecedented level. I think no other country, uh, no middle-income country was able to source um, the HCV treatment at the price Malaysia did. So competition uh, is good. The problem is monopolies. And I think in the, in the context of drugs, we often see monopolistic situation, which brings prices up. But, you know, boosting the generic industry of Malaysia, uh, encouraging uh, different players to come on the market, these are all very good things for all of us because it brings the price of uh, treatment down or, or vaccines. Well, I want to talk about that a little bit, Jean-Michel. In terms of domestic research and production capacity of vaccines in Malaysia, have we invested enough um, and, and sh or should we be looking to invest more right now? Is, is that kind of too little, too late? Well, you're talking to the wrong person because uh, the, the, the idea of the NDI uh, is to promote and to push uh, for more public commitment to medical research and development. You know, the, the, the model we have, which is a big pharma model um, with uh, uh, patent and high profit, is, it's fine, but it's not delivering all the drugs we need. It's not delivering on, on uh, for example, antibiotics. We don't have any new antibiotics. So um, we need to have uh, strong national industries and we need to have uh, governments. So the Malaysian government should invest much more in uh, uh, medical research. I mean, first of all, it's, it's, you know, it's a good market to invest in, but we need that. We need to have new players to engage in the uh, research and development of new drugs. We can't always have the same uh, group expected to deliver all the drugs and so i think yes it's it's important it's strategic and it's crucial okay jean michel in the last minute so that we have what is the likely scenario do you see happening or unfolding in a malaysian context when a, uh, a vaccine is developed what is likely to happen do you think uh, i don't i mean i hope we will get it very quickly in malaysia I, um, it doesn't matter whether it's locally produced or whether it's imported as long as it's affordable so I hope the likely scenario is I hope it will be enough countries uh, fighting to make sure that whichever new vaccine is, is available on the market is available at a low cost. 
and it's that there is no monopolistic situation created by um, a patent system that would uh, guarantee uh, yeah, a monopoly for one company to have uh, access to the Malaysian market. So we need to open, we need to uh, team up with other countries in the region and beyond to make sure that these vaccines are available because we need them. You know, this is going to be certainly uh, the solution to get us back to a form of normality. Jean-Michel, thank you so much for speaking with us tonight. I appreciate your time uh, and your insights with us, uh, sharing that insights with us. Thank you so much for your time. Now we're You're welcome. We're take a quick break and uh, we'll be back to continue this conversation on vaccine development in just a few minutes. Stay tuned to consider this.